Dinosaurs thrived across the entire planet, including the poles, which presented a challenging environment with months of darkness, even during warmer periods. In this early Jurassic of ancient Antarctica, Cryolophosaurus would stalk the ancient conifer forest. Originally nicknamed Elvisaurus due to the pompadour-like crest on its head, Cryolophosaurus was the first significant dinosaur discovery in Antarctica. The fossil find was exceptionally unique as Antarctica's challenging accessibility, coupled with harsh snowstorms and frozen rock, made excavation a difficult task for paleontologists. Nevertheless, they managed to recover a skull, vertebrae, ribs, and various other fossils which provided valuable insights into the appearance of this predator. Weighing an estimated 770 pounds, Cryolophosaurus was among the largest theropods of the early Jurassic period. Like other early theropods, it possessed prominent cranial display features, and Cryolophosaurus was no exception. While dinosaurs such as Dilophosaurus exhibited double crest and Ceratosaurus sported horns, Cryolophosaurus stood out with its unique crest. Positioned at the front of its skull, just ahead of the eyes, this crest took the form of a forward-facing fan-shaped structure. The crest curved forward at the top, resembling a breaking wave. This distinct feature led to the nickname Elvisaurus, drawing a comparison to Elvis Presley's iconic hairstyle. Currently, all known Crylophosaurus specimens have been unearthed from the Hanson Formation, which is one of the two dinosaur-bearing rock formations discovered in the now-frozen continent of Antarctica. During Crylophosaurus's existence, Antarctica possessed a relatively temperate climate and hosted flourishing conifer forests reminiscent of those found in western China. However, over time, the continent gradually shifted southward and experienced a significant drop in temperature, eventually becoming the coldest place on Earth. As the largest known theropod from Antarctica during the early Jurassic period, there is no doubt that Crylophosaurus reigned as the most formidable predator in its region. This era marked the rise of dinosaurs as dominant creatures as they began to exert their influence over the landscape. While dinosaurs had originated approximately 30 million years prior, it was after the Triassic-Jurassic extinction event around 200 million years ago that they emerged as a preeminent terrestrial vertebrates worldwide. Cryolophosaurus was on the verge of playing a significant role in the Jurassic Park franchise but was ultimately replaced by a more famous and well-known dinosaur. In the initial drafts, Cryolophosaurus was under consideration to appear in the Netflix series Jurassic World Camp Cretaceous where a baby dinosaur was intended to have a major role. However, it was eventually substituted with Bumpy the Ankylosaurus. If you'd like to keep learning more about Cryolophosaurus, then this video will feature a complete paleontological profile of the cold crested lizard and an attempt to recreate its environment in the game Jurassic World Evolution 2. Cryolophosaurus is a sizable theropod carnivore that thrived in the early Jurassic period around 190 to 183 million years ago. Notably, it was the first carnivorous dinosaur to be unearthed from the Hansen Formation, one of the two primary rock formations in Antarctica known to contain dinosaur remains. During the early Jurassic, Antarctica boasted a vastly dissimilar environment compared to its present-day icy conditions. The region experienced a relatively temperate climate, supporting lush forests that harbored a diverse array of life forms. With an estimated weight exceeding 770 pounds and a length of approximately 23 feet, Cryolophosaurus stood as one of the largest theropods of the early Jurassic period. It's important to note that the only known discovered specimen of Cryolophosaurus was not fully mature, indicating that adults of the species would have been even larger than the current known specimen. This suggests that Cryolophosaurus reached an even more impressive size during adulthood, although specific measurements for fully grown individuals have not been determined due to the limited fossil record available. Cryolophosaurus possess a relatively short and deep skull, measuring around 25 inches, complemented by saw-edge teeth. These anatomical features were well suited for slicing through tough hides and flesh, indicating that Cryolophosaurus was an adept and efficient predator. With its formidable jaws and teeth, it likely preyed upon a range of herbivorous dinosaurs, overpowering them with ease. Additionally, Cryolophosaurus may have targeted smaller and more agile prey such as early mammals and reptiles, taking advantage of its hunting prowess and adaptability. The combination with skull shape and teeth morphology suggests that Cryolophosaurus was a brutal and formidable hunter in its ecosystem. 
Furthermore, Crylophosaurus possessed a long neck that provided the necessary mobility for pursuing fast-moving prey. Its slender arms feature hands with four claws, a primitive characteristic as most later theropods typically had three claws. However, Crylophosaurus faced a limitation with its side-facing eyes, resulting in poor binocular vision. As a consequence, its depth possession and ability to perceive objects in three dimensions were likely compromised. Despite this visual constraint, Crylophosaurus compensated with other anatomical adaptations to excel as a predator. Similar to other dinosaurs, Crylophosaurus maintained a warm body temperature. It is believed, based on findings in related species, that it may have possessed a covering of downy fuzz, which would have helped preserve its body heat. Research conducted on other theropod dinosaurs has indicated that many large carnivores were predominantly active during the night or at twilight, suggesting a crepuscular or nocturnal lifestyle. Therefore, despite its limited binocular vision, Cryolophosaurus likely had eyes adapted to detective movement in low-light conditions. Indeed, one of the most remarkable characteristics of Cryolophosaurus is its unique crest. This carnivorous dinosaur possessed a bony crest that curled forward at the top, resembling a breaking wave. It is believed that this crest was not only visually striking, but also vividly colored, akin to the dramatic feathery crest of an Amazonian bubble flycatcher. Like the flycatcher and several other theropods, it is hypothesized that the crest serves as a social signal, playing a role in communication and species recognition. To further support this theory, it is thought that the crest would have been covered by a tough keratinous sheath when Crylophosaurus was alive. This external covering would have enhanced the crest's appearance and durability. While the exact colors and patterns of the crest remain speculative, the presence of such a prominent or ornamental feature suggests that Crylophosaurus likely employed it for communication within its species. Based on the presence of elaborate display features like the crest, it is reasonable to infer that Crylophosaurus was a social creature. The coloration and size of the crest likely played a significant role in establishing social hierarchy within the species. It is worth noting that other early Jurassic theropods, such as Dilophosaurus with a double crest and Ceratosaurus with its horns, also exhibited display features on top of their skulls. These display features were likely used by rival dinosaurs to settle disputes through visual demonstrations rather than engaging in direct physical combat, which could be perilous for both individuals. By showcasing their impressive crest and other display features, dinosaurs like Cryolophosaurus could assert their dominance and resolve conflicts without engaging in potentially dangerous and energy-consuming battles. This form of visual communication would have been vital for maintaining social order and minimizing the risk of injuries during disputes. Once you get over how unique the Cryolophosaurus crest looks like, you might want to direct your attention to its tail. Dinosaurs like Monolophosaurus had long and flexible tails as early members of the Titanarae. However, as these species evolved, their tails became shorter and stiffer. This change served as a counterbalance to the increasing size of their skulls, as seen in dinosaurs such as Tyrannosaurus rex during the Cretaceous period. The name Titanarae, or stiff tails, refers to this adaptation, which represents a transition point in a tail sequence where the vertebrae undergo distinctive changes in form. The interesting thing about Crylophosaurus is that during the early Jurassic period, it already possessed a shorter and less flexible tail. This trait, which would take millions of years to develop in other Titanorans, was present in Crylophosaurus at an earlier stage of its evolution. This suggests that Crylophosaurus had already undergone tail modifications that allowed for greater stability and balance even before other members of the Titanorae lineage. The early appearance of this tail adaptation in Crylophosaurus highlights its unique evolutionary trajectory among its dinosaur relatives. The last known Crylophosaurus specimens were discovered approximately 180 million years ago, marking the beginning of the Jurassic period. It is believed that Crylophosaurus went extinct during the end Jurassic transition, a period that was once classified as one of the eight mass extinctions. However, the end Jurassic transition is now considered a more complex interval of faunal turnover characterized by changes in biodiversity. Further research and study are necessary to fully understand the dynamics of the end Jurassic transition and its impact on different animal groups, including Cryolophosaurus. Cryolophosaurus was discovered during the summer of 1991 on Mount Kirkpatrick in the Beardmore Glacier region of the Transarctic Mountains. The discovery was made by Dr. William Hammer, professor at Augustana College, and the rest of his team. 
During that summer, both Dr. William Hammer and the Ohio State University geologist Dr. David Elliott conducted excavation near Beardmore Glacier, taking into consideration logistical expenses. This decision proved to be fruitful, as Dr. Elliott and his team were the first to come across the remains of Cryolophosaurus in a rock formation located at an altitude of approximately 13,000 feet, which was situated about 400 miles from the South Pole. They notified Hammer and his team as soon as they realized what they were dealing with. Over the next few weeks, the team excavated about 5,000 pounds of fossil-bearing rock and recovered over 100 fossils, including those of Cryolophosaurus. The sediment in which the fossils were found had been dated at 190 to 183 million years ago, representing the early Jurassic period. Cryolophosaurus was the second dinosaur and the first theropod to be discovered in Antarctica. Technically, it was discovered after Antarctopelta, but Cryolophosaurus was named earlier. It was formally named and described by Dr. Hammer in the Journal of Science as Cryolophosaurus eliadi. The name Cryolophosaurus is derived from the Greek word kairos, meaning cold or frozen, lophos, meaning crest, and saros, meaning lizard. Therefore, it translates to cold crested lizard. The specific name Eliadi was added as a tribute to David Eliot, the chief mountaineer of the expedition that first discovered the Cryolophosaurus fossil. During the excavation and transportation of Cryolophosaurus for study, additional discoveries were made. Long ribs of a presumed proceropod dinosaur were found in the mouth of Cryolophosaurus, leading Dr. Hammer to conclude in 1998 that it was feeding on the proceropod when it died. Hammer observed that the ribs extended all the way back to the theropod's neck region, suggesting that this individual might have choked to death on the ribs. Additionally, Dr. Hammer discovered a canine tooth belonging to an early proto-mammal in the stomach contents of Cryolophosaurus when it died. However, in recent years, Dr. Nathan D. Smith has reached a different conclusion. He determined that the remains found in the mouth of Cryolophosaurus actually belonged to the Cryolophosaurus specimen itself, rather than the proceropod as previously believed. This revised interpretation suggests that the theropod was cannibalistic and had consumed its own kind, which is an intriguing aspect of its behavior and ecology. In 2010, paleontologist Thomas R. Holtz conducted a study on the unusual crest of Cryolophosaurus and proposed a new interpretation. Based on evidence from related species and studies of bone texture, Holtz concluded that the crest primarily served as a means of intraspecies recognition. He suggested that the crest would have been ineffective as a weapon and was more likely a display feature used during a specific social behaviors such as mating or establishing social hierarchy. This new understanding adds to our knowledge of Cryolophosaurus and its unique adaptation. More recently in 2017, a fundraising campaign was initiated to acquire a Cryolophosaurus replica for the Orange Geological Museum. The campaign successfully raised the necessary funds of $80,000, enabling the museum to obtain a replica of the Cryolophosaurus. It is worth noting that the original fossils of Cryolophosaurus are currently housed at the Field Museum of Natural History in Chicago, where they are preserved and studied by paleontologists. The replica at the Orton Geological Museum allows visitors to appreciate and learn more about this fascinating dinosaur species. All known Cryolophosaurus fossils have been recovered from the Hansen Formation, which is one of only two significant dinosaur bearing rock formations found in Antarctica. As mentioned earlier, life in Antarctica during the early Jurassic period was vastly different from its current state. At that time, Antarctica was situated closer to the equator, and even in the coldest months, annual temperatures did not drop significantly below freezing. Although Antarctica had its extreme zones, it is noteworthy that Cryolophosaurus fossils are not found in those regions. Even though ancient Antarctica was relatively milder compared to its present harsh conditions, it would have still posed challenges for living organisms. It is reasonable to assume that there were occasional snowfalls and the landmass was far enough south to experience extended periods of darkness during the winter months. Over time, Antarctica has drifted southward and gradually cooled, becoming the coldest place on Earth. The ability of Cryolophosaurus and other dinosaurs to inhabit this region provides paleontologists with valuable insight into dinosaur biology and their adaptability to diverse environments. Indeed, Cryolophosaurus lived in a more temperate climate during the early Jurassic period. The presence of forests dominated by conifers suggested a lush environment similar to regions like western China. While Jurassic plants are found in various locations worldwide, the fossil discoveries from several localities in northern England have contributed significantly to our understanding of the plant life during the period. 
these fossils have provided valuable insight to the composition and diversity of plant species that coexisted with dinosaurs, helping us paint a more detailed picture of the ancient ecosystems. The plant life of the Jurassic was more lush and widespread than in the Triassic, but otherwise it was very similar. There were no flowering plants or grasses during this period, but vast forests of ferns, ginkgos, cycads, and various kinds of conifers covered the landscape. The warm and humid climate of the Jurassic was ideal for ferns, which thrived in the forested areas, and the dominant trees were tall conifers, some of which resembled modern Chilean pines or monkey puzzle trees. Cycads exhibited great diversity during the Jurassic period, and the fossil record provides detailed information about their pollen and seed cones, which closely resembled those of modern cycad species. Additionally, fossils of fan-shaped leaves indicate that ginkgos were widespread throughout the Jurassic. The landscape of that time featured lakes and rivers, creating a diverse ecosystem that supported various organisms, including Crylophosaurus. Dinosaurs started to dominate during the Jurassic period, even though their origins date back 30 million years earlier. It was after the Triassic-Jurassic extinction event, which occurred 200 million years ago, that dinosaurs emerged as the predominant land vertebrates worldwide. In the environment where Cryolophosaurus thrived, remnants of Triassic lineages coexisted. This included small proto-mammals and seropotomorph dinosaurs of diverse sizes. Among them, Glacialisaurus, a recently identified species, reached a similar size to Cryolophosaurus. Additionally, there were smaller seropotomorphs comparable in size to a medium-sized dog. These smaller dinosaurs, along with the juveniles of larger species, would have made suitable prey for a carnivore of Cryolophosaurus' magnitude. And as mentioned earlier, there is evidence suggesting cannibalistic behavior in Crylophosaurus. The discovery of a juvenile Crylophosaurus skeleton surrounded by broken teeth of an adult indicates that the larger dinosaur may have scavenged or preyed upon its own juveniles. This behavior provides insight into the ecological dynamics and predatory strategies of Crylophosaurus. It is important to note that specific fauna would have varied depending on the location and ecosystem Crylophosaurus inhabited. What we know about Crylophosaurus and its contemporaries is based on fossil evidence and our understanding of the prehistoric world continues to evolve as new discoveries are made. While Crylophosaurus is an interesting and unique dinosaur in its own right, it has yet to make an appearance on the big screen in the Jurassic Park franchise, only making some appearances in the Jurassic Park video game franchise. Unfortunately, Crylophosaurus was discovered in 1991, which was long after the initial Jurassic Park novel which was published in 1990. It made its first video game appearance in Warpath Jurassic Park as one of the six unlockable dinosaurs, featuring three different colors, black, light orange, and green. In addition to Warpath, Crylophosaurus appears as an epic dinosaur in the Dilophosaurus family in the mobile game Jurassic World Primal Ops. It has also been featured in games such as Jurassic World The Game and Jurassic World Evolution. And in some behind the scenes information, it was considered for Crylophosaurus to appear in the Netflix series Jurassic World Camp Cretaceous. Initially, a baby Crylophosaurus was set to play a major sidekick role, but it was later replaced by Bumpy the Ankylosaurus. While not featured in the Jurassic Park franchise, Crylophosaurus made a big screen appearance in the Discovery series The Reign of the Dinosaurs. In this documentary, two Crylophosaurus are depicted facing off in a battle to the death as they compete for a potential mate. Hey guys, welcome back to my park. As you can see here, we're going to go ahead and work on our Crylophosaurus habitat. Uh, I've gone ahead and put our little enclosure here, ready to go. Um, I've added um, park tour and we got ourselves uh, two ranger posts ready to go and I actually wanted to go ahead and add a log so we're gonna do an environment that's sort of like western China so a lot of conifer trees it's gonna be very very woodlandish so um, we're going to have to do a lot of planning um, right here I'm just go ahead and put up our little connection and that'll be here just get these fences up and going I forgot which fence I use I believe it's these guys it is okay so we got our logs able to be going 
in the path is working and now what we're gonna do is do a lot of rivers so this was uh, a fluvial environment so a lot of rivers going up and down but before that let's go ahead and raise some of the terrain we don't want to keep it too um, too flat so we'll raise it here and then just go ahead and smooth it out and then if you want we can do one more mount and I kinda wanna do it right here not too raised but just you know just a little bit and smooth it out and let's work on our river so let's try to make them really skinny let's have one work from here go this way and we're gonna end in a little lake area here by that uh, little mound that we built so this will be a lake obviously the tracks can't um, be underwater so we'll leave those there and we'll try to make the river a bit skinny so we'll do that we'll add another river coming up this way and then another one this way through that other mound that we mentioned and um, just wait for that jeep to go through there we go go ahead and make this a bit skinnier if you want we can even do something like that let's kind of keep it a little uneven and then these can keep going over here have these connect see if the water can go this way it looks like it can Bite it just a bit and there we go we got a nice little rivers uh, we could even build more over here if we wanted to so let's see actually we cannot uh, maybe we can or we cannot so we'll just leave it like that this will be the continuation of another river oh actually let's do that let's connect this one right here perfect so i want to make it too thick and that will be the river that looks actually perfect a little marshy you can leave it like that too it doesn't have to be perfect and now that we got that done let's go ahead and work with our terrain so we got a lot of grass a lot of um, dirt a lot of rock and sand we're not going to use a lot of sand this time we mainly focus on dirt and grass just because it's a lot of fluvial environments so it's it's a lot of dark sediment you'll hardly even see the ground just because of how um you know how well planted it is so we don't really have to do much i'll just darken the river here make it look like it's deeper than it really is but aside from that i think we're just going to go over and jump on our uh, on our trees here So let's work on our trees here. Um, let's go ahead and do alpine, but we're at the wrong one. Let's do environment. And let's go with, um, let's do some Temskia first. Obviously we're gonna do a lot, a lot of conifers, but let's do some Temskia. So let's do Temskia in this little area right here, starting off, and then we'll move some over here. and another little part right here and actually something i do want to do is i want to make this area like um you know since there is winter seasons there is going to be you know a harsh environment there's going to be some parts of the area where you know there's dead trees and you know from the harsh conditions so we'll go ahead and add some harsh conditions here just kind of just getting a little bit like that I wish we had a little bit more like, um, I guess this looks pretty good actually, we'll use this instead. A little bit of grass showing that it's rebounding, but here what I want to use is our newly uh, given decoration, which is these dead trees. So let's put a couple of these around, and then we'll put some... Um, some rocks as well it's not too much and make it unnatural but let's go ahead and do that and with that being done let's go back to our 
Temskia. So we'll get some Temskia here. Uh, we'll also work with some Ginkgos. Just, you know, kind of Bob Ross it. Sparingly put some here and there. That's actually pretty good. Um, we could do some, no, no seed plants, uh, no grasses either. So I guess seed plants, um, these are different seed plants. These aren't the flowering plants. So I guess you can use them. But for this time, let's just focus on cycads. Um, and like I said, the big one's going to be on the conifers. So we'll give those uh, a nice grab right now. Um, we'll just finish it off with some dark, deep forest. So like I said, um, perfect habitat for um, Western China is kind of like this. No palm trees though, so we're actually going to try to avoid this one. At least not during that time. Um, let's go ahead and yeah, we can switch over to our um, conifers, which are going to be these guys right here. So, you know, this is going to take a while, but uh, you know, just start planning away. And uh, this is going to give this environment a nice, um, you know, woodland heavy foliage environment, which is the perfect environment uh, that's in Western China right now. So just, uh, yeah, just go hand with these. I'm going to fast forward uh, so you can see what the finished product look like, looks like. Um, but yeah, you'll see right now how it looks. So now that we got that done, let's go ahead and just um, work on the lower part of the foliage. So we'll use some fibrous ground cover. We'll cover this part down here as well as this part. And then we'll switch over to some leafy climbers. Actually, let's not because that's too much grass. We don't really want to add too much grass here. Um, so we'll switch over to the grass and shrubs. Let's actually not do that. That's actually the opposite of what we want. Um, let's just stick with stems and calamites. That's, you know, it's still going to give us a little bit of grass, which we really don't want because, you know, this is before grass is developed, but nevertheless, I think this is how it's going to have to go. We'll use a Temskia that looks a bit better. We still do get the grass, but, you know, it's what you can get. So we'll use that throughout the enclosure, some calamites and some Temskia. And with that, we should be done. Last thing is just going to be adding some rocks, and you know that one. Um, that one's also going to take its time, especially if you like to um, cluster them together. It's going to be hard with all these trees around. But you know, just make of it as you will. Um, this enclosure, though, um, looks pretty good to me. I'll add the dinosaurs right now. I'll get the tour going. Um, that way, you can see how uh, the final product looks. And uh, maybe you can go ahead and try this in your park as well. Um, like I said, it's a habitat that's reminiscent of Western China. So you can go ahead and Google it and, you know, get your own inspiration from there. I saw a lot of conifer trees just lined up together and bunched up. So I thought I'd recreate that right here as well. And um, yeah, I think it looks so good so far. And uh, once I add the dinosaurs and everything like that, I think it's going to look even better. Uh, This medium-sized carnivore with its distinctive crest atop its skull makes Cryolophosaurus a beautiful but deadly addition to your Jurassic Park. Thank you all for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more. See you in the next one.